You know, one of the things I see in a lot of you brothers is that y'all are afraid. Y'all are afraid of a lot of stuff. Y'all are afraid of being lonely, although most of y'all are already lonely. You're afraid of, of not being successful, although most of you are not already successful. You know, you're afraid of so many things that are already in your reality. You, you, you're so afraid that you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, thinking that you're escaping something, but you're not escaping anything. You're literally running around in circles. You're not escaping because you don't know how to escape. The first place you gotta escape is up here. And the only thing that conquers fear is acceptance. I believe you dudes are just afraid of what's going on. Y'all afraid that you won't be able to control a woman. You're afraid you won't be able to get a woman. You're afraid of so many things. You're afraid that you're not good enough. You're afraid that you're inadequate. You're afraid that you don't measure up socioeconomically to, to the demands that you feel like women won't. You feel like women want a man to have all these bells and whistles and you, you're afraid that you can't match that. So you spend your time and energy engaged in a pointless gender war that's not benefiting you. Another thing you gotta have an understanding of is be selfish. If it don't benefit you, don't, don't, don't engage in it. Point blank. I always tell people that when I start formulating this organization, I don't want black men to join the organization to help me. I want black men to join the organization to help themselves. It just becomes more productive and easier to succeed like that, you know, when everybody's working towards a common goal. But I don't want nobody coming here for me. Come over here for you. Come do it for you. And I'm not even doing it for me because truthfully, I'm, I'm not living in the same hell that a lot of y'all in. I, I don't suffer the same mental problems, you know what I'm saying? The same emotional problems, you know, same psychological problems. I don't have these, so I am here for you. I am not I, I am not here so you can help me. I am here to help you. And I'm telling you, fear is the problem. And the only thing conquers fear is acceptance. Once you realize that it is what it is, and there's nothing you can do about it, you move differently. And it's hard, bro, because, you know, a lot of us grow up, we got sisters and stuff while we growing up. And our little sisters got our back, or our big sisters got our back. <clears throat> you know, they out there fighting for us. If, they, if you got a big sister, you know, they out there fighting for us and stuff. You know, they got our back, we got their back. You know, the girls in the neighborhood, you know, if you grew up in a hood like I did in a black community, you know, we had all the girls back in our neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? No, no dude was going to come around and hit none of these girls, but we was going to scrap, you know what I'm saying? And... It gets hard because you got to accept the fact that by the time that girl is an adult, she's going to be different. Especially if she goes to college. She goes to college, especially for four years. She gets, she, look, she goes through college for four years. Your sister's not going to be your sister anymore. You got to accept that fact. If she grew up, if she grew up around feminist influence, black women that are feminist influence, you already see it. And as I talk about this, I think about, we was at this, at one of my spots in the mall, right? I was talking to this young brother that worked over there by, 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 by one of them great American cookie shops or whatever, right? And I mean, you couldn't see a bigger contrast. Had some little white girls come up to buy some cookies and they were just so mild man and sweet. Excuse me, mister, can I have one of these? And can I have one of these? Um, and what do you want, asked her sister? My sister, I, I want a such and such. Um, and, and, you know, and they ordered, right? That that was their demeanor. Got the stuff they paid for. You know, the parents were stepped, stepped way back. You know, parents wasn't standing right on. They was letting them buy the cookies, you know. They gave the money, you know. He said, hold on, get your chains. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You know, so nice and sweet. And then right behind them, but you can't make this stuff up. Right behind them, a little girl walks up. Black girl. She walks up with her mom's door, you know what I'm saying? A little black girl walk up. And she's standing all sideways, looking at the cookies and stuff. Um, give me um, um, um and, and me and the brother was behind the counter. We looked like, what the heck? I mean, the little fucker was that tall, bro. I mean, Roland, give me uh, I, and I want and I want I mean attitude. Aggressive attitude. And the mom's sitting there not thinking nothing of it. 
So if, if a black woman is actually raised with that kind of mother around them kind of aunts, she's through by the time she's 15. She's done, bruh. You can't do nothing but smash and dash on that. She is done. By the time she, and, and the crazy thing is that they get angry as they get older because their ways, they have, they have built-in hostilities towards black men that they act upon. But see, when they homos arrange, right, when they meet a black dude that they like, that they're attracted to, they suppress it. And after they eat you up a few times and you bang them out a few times, it comes back to the surface and then they become antagonistic towards you again. Y'all break up. And but when y'all break up, she blames you. It's gonna always be your fault. She's gonna go around telling everybody with a nasty with, with a no good nigga you were. They act towards us like white society act towards us. Black women act towards black men like white society act towards the whole world. You know these Europeans are good for starting shit. And then when you respond, oh look at these terrorists, look at these people, look how violent they are. But they started it. And that's what black women do. These are not unconscious behaviors. These are conscious behaviors. I have dealt with these kinds of women personally. And I'm telling you, this is why the honeymoon phase goes, goes so quick with them, man. It's all good at, at first. And then once that stuff calms down and they, and they no longer getting wet every time they see you, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they all day it's feminist. It's feminist rhetoric going through their head. Every book they read, everything they listen to on on, on, on a podcast, on, on social media, and their friends, it's all anti-black man stuff. But they they, but they they land up on you eating you alive, you know what I'm saying, because they like you. But all day they've been told to hate you. And at some point, they wake up and like, no, I'm not supposed to like this dude. He's a man. I hate him. And it's over from that point. And if you could learn to accept that, as soon as you see it, you cut them off and you move on. That's over. And this is why I said in the previous video that you never put yourself in a situation where you get used because you don't know how long you're, you're gonna be dealing with this woman because when that woman wakes up and start consciously acting on, the, on, on her teaching and her training, she's done. Now I know you say, well, don't teaching and training make you move unconsciously? It does, but not when it's a belief. When it's an ideology, see, there's no logic to ideology. Ideology. There's no logic to ideology. So you got to consciously always thinking about ways to justify doing what you're doing. This is why when you argue or debate an ideologue, it goes nowhere. Because no matter how many times you corner them, they just turn. Turn. I mean, I've had situations with these feminist type women, bro. But you start off talking to them. And see, y'all start at this point, right? At point A right and then over the course of an hour you disprove or, or, or show the error in everything she says all the way around the alphabet and then finally she ended up repeating the same thing she said initially that started the whole conversation i've seen it a thousand times in my personal life the same comment and you like we started here we already dealt with that you know what i'm saying and if you don't catch it you're gonna find yourself going around again with them and around and around and, and it, it just doesn't end. And this is conscious because the thing is, they just don't wanna admit you're right. They just don't wanna yield. They just don't wanna give in. So no matter how much you corner them, no matter how much you beat down what they say, they keep coming because this is how they are conditioned. They're not gonna give in to you because of the way they see you. I've had them tell me that, oh, you, you, you like to always try to make me feel stupid. I mean, I've had at least five different black women tell me that. Tell me I like to make them feel stupid. You always try to make me feel stupid. I can't help it if I'm smarter than you. I'm not trying to make you look stupid. I'm trying to correct errors. When you bring something to me that's not right, I'm just correcting it. I'm not trying to make you feel stupid. I'm trying to teach you. But they don't want to be taught by you, brother. Because of the way they see you. So once you accept that this is just what it is, this is this is the relationship we have with these women, you know, you got to move on. So acceptance will destroy that. Once you accept that this is what it is, right? This is what it is. It's not going to change. I can't change it. There's nothing I can say to them to change it. So you just move on, bro. You disengage. Once again, you fight so that you can have peace tomorrow. But when you're dealing with a, a, a war virtually, right? 
or fought in the in in the in in, in the media or something like that, right? Fought through propaganda. Then the best thing you can do is just disengage. You gotta disengage from the from, from the bullshit because that type of war has no ending. It has no benefit in that kind of war. You gotta disengage from it and go live your life. And you do that by accepting. As a black man, you gotta accept the fact that you have no allies in America. We brothers are all we got. So we need to stop fighting with each other. All this bullshit that y'all wanna try to blame Pookie and Ray Ray, leave them alone, but they, they are not your enemy. In fact, if shit pop off, you're gonna want them on your side because your soft ass don't fight, they do. Your soft ass don't shoot, they do. You're gonna need them. That's your foot soldiers. And the crazy thing is they don't mind being foot soldiers. So while you, while you dissing them, you need to get close to them because they don't mind, they are comfortable. You know, and when they when you young and wild, you comfortable in battle. And that's the kind of people you need. If, if stuff really pop off, you're gonna need them kind. You're gonna need the soldier class. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna need the warrior class. If you wanna be intellectual, then you you play that role and you learn how to play that role properly by giving good guidance. You can't pretend to be intellectual when all you are is just emotional wreck. When everything you do is just reactionary, you know what I'm saying? You mad, you in your feelings all the time. Every time Brother Kush say something that might rub you the wrong way, you get mad and unsubscribe, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't built for leadership, bro. Because nothing I say on this channel is really intended to take a jab at you, brothers. If I say something that, 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 that hits home, then I'm trying to help you. Take what I'm saying and consider it. That's all you can do. But what you need to do first is accept that it is what it is. We have no allies. We are all we got. Black women will never be our allies again. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take a long time. The only way to get black women back as our sisters is to disengage from them. It's going to take, it's going to take a long time. Accept the fact that you're looking at your young sister or your young cousin while you're growing up, that these women are going to be different when they get older. Accept it. Today, y'all friends. Tomorrow, y'all not going to be friends. You know what I'm saying? Just accept it. You heard that girl crying, talking about, you know, her brother coming and say, man, what's wrong? And she's like, you know, these niggas made me sick. They don't care about nothing that don't affect them. She mad at her brothers because her brothers did not support Kamala Harris. Once you accept that black women gonna be hostile towards black men, no matter what we do or say, you're gonna accept that and you're gonna move on. It's acceptance. But the reason why you don't move on, the reason why you do everything you do is because you are afraid. You are scared. But acceptance will break that fear. Trust me. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm out here. Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. Salam. So